not from France. Let's talk about that. Good afternoon, class. It's your music teacher, Mr. Halverson, here at the home of the Rouse School Mustangs. And as you can tell by the ukuleles above me and the text behind me, we're finally back in the music room for episode seven of Good Mythical Music. So what about it, Mr. Halverson? I mean, it's called the French horn. How is it not from France? I mean, so, so what, what's going on with that? You know, that's a very good question that has stuck around with us for an incredibly long span of time. In fact, we are one of the few places in the world that actually call it the, the French horn. In fact, uh, most non-English speaking countries don't even refer to it as, as the French horn. Okay, so there's some kind of confusion over it. Uh, most of them don't even have the word French or France in the beginning of it. In fact, in France, they don't even call it the French horn. They just call it le corps, which means the horn in, in French. Um, in fact, in 1971, believe it or not, okay, the International Horn Society recommended that horn be the recognized name uh, for the instrument in the English language. Um, but it just hasn't caught on yet. Um, the places actually here in the U.S. where we see the term French horn used the most by well, is by non-musicians who just don't know. Can't tell you the number of times people said that I play the tuba. I mean, I do, but they're saying that this instrument's the tuba and it's, it's not. It's the trombone. So we're going to cut them a little bit of slack. But usually in elementary schools like ours, junior highs and high school will refer to that instrument as a French horn. But if you go on to college, it's simply referred to as horn. In particular, the French horn as we know it today is simply the horn in F because it's, it's in the key of F. But we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So if the horn isn't French, where does it end up coming from? Okay, the modern day horn is actually descended from hunting horns, and one's popping up here. Um, and hunting horns are being used quite a bit in places like France, okay, but also places like Germany during the 16th century. And it's not exactly clear as to when they started adapting the hunting horn for use in orchestral works, but they've got a good idea that the first time um, it, it starts getting used, specifically in a musical setting, is by a uh, French composer by the name of Jean-Baptiste Lully, who used them in a ballet in the year 1664. Okay, um, They may have been the first to introduce the hunting horn to the orchestra, but it's, it's actually the Germans that uh, developed the playing technique and modernized the instrument as what we know it as today. In fact, there's a guy by the name of Heinrich Stolzel who invented the first horn with valves in 1814. Um, so the, the image should still be up. Um, this is what a lot of those earlier horns would look like. And as we look at its progression, we're going to notice some similarities between it and uh, other uh, the, the later um, horns that uh, come into use. So this one, as you see, it has no valves whatsoever. It's basically just a long piece of tubing that's wrapped in a circle. And in fact, a lot of times there are Christmas ornaments that we'll see that look just like this instrument. Okay. Now this instrument doesn't have any valves, doesn't have any keys. So it was somewhat limited as to the way that it could actually play anything. Okay, which is probably why it took as long as what it did before they started using it in things like orchestras. Well, what ends? How, how does how does that problem get fixed? They start using this thing um, where the horn players end up putting their hands in the bell of the horn, and it helps to create the other notes that it can't play on its own. Okay, any brass instrument. Um, for a given slide position or for a given valve combination can play any number of notes to an extent based upon how a musician is able to buzz their lips, okay? The way, the shape of our mouth as it goes up against that mouthpiece on brass instruments, well, woodwind instruments as well too, we call the embouchure. That's the shape of your mouth as it goes to the mouthpiece. Now, when it comes to brass uh, wind instruments, like the horn and F, like the trombone, like the trumpet, we produce that sound by buzzing. So when that horn is first there, it's only able to produce 
any number of sounds within that length of tubing without any other adjustment based upon how you're able to buzz your lips. As a trombone player, we call that overtones, um, or we call them partials. By, by a looser buzz gives us a lower sound, and a higher buzz gives us a higher sound, and we can play a bunch of different notes in the same spot. So this is my trombone here, and I'm going to demonstrate that for us. So this is all going to be in first position. These are not all, but a number of the notes that I can play with just the slide in this position here. And that's the way that the hunting horn is going to work as well. By changing how I buzz my lips, I can play all of those different notes. But it's kind of difficult to play a song. So what they end up doing is they put their hand in the bell of the horn, and they're able to start playing those other notes individually, like what you would have, like what you could do if you move your slide, like I do for when I'm playing trombone. They're able to finally start playing those other notes by their hand being in the bell. It kind of forces that instrument to play those different sounds. So it goes from that hunting style horn. Here's the one. This is actually from the Metropolitan Museum um, and uh, otherwise known as the Met. And this one's from about the 1860s. So not quite as old as some of those other ones that we're talking about. But later on, they do develop it where it's got these piston valves that you see popping up. Now, quite similar to like what we see on a trumpet. Piston, they're pushed up and down, okay? Um, this one goes on for a while. And then finally, thanks to the same folks that brought us the Autobahn and the Panzer tank, that's right, German engineering, we finally get what we have today in the modern horn and F, or French horn, is the one with the uh, rotary valves. Now, one of the things that made all of this uh, playing possible um, is the way that their tuning slides work, okay? So the modern horn today is, is actually, we call it the horn in F because it's in the key of F. So one of the things that horn players had to do in the past, they had to either transpose or use different tubings to change what key the instrument's in. Now on the trombone, my tuning slides are over here, okay? I can adjust by lengthening them, I can make the overall sound lower. And by shortening it, I can make the overall sound higher. So what would happen with the horns at that time frame, before we, we have the modern horn that we've got now, they would actually have to pull these out, grab a different set of tubing that was longer, and sometimes they'd have different loops, and they would have to put them back onto the instrument to change what key that they're playing in. In fact, when I was attending high school, at Sydney High School here in Sydney, in the what used to be the back room before the, the remodel, which is still there, uh, my brother, the other Mr. Halverson, who teaches in, in town, came across this box that had all of these tuning slides, um, similar but different to what you just saw on my trombone. And we talked to our band director, we're like, what in the world are these? And he said, oh, these, these are for changing the key that the, uh, the horn players are in. So if you're playing a song in the key of A, you'd pull off the tubings and put in these other tubings so that you're playing in the correct key. Well, today, fortunately, we don't have to do that with the way that the instruments all put together. So we've got this wonderful instrument now that's capable of playing things incredibly high and incredibly low as well, similar to what you've seen me do on the trombone and the different examples that we've had. Um, there are still piston valve ones that are out there. In fact, there are entire organizations that um, enjoy geeking out on the, uh, the piston valve uh, horns in F and A and all kinds of other stuff as well. But you kind of see from where it was to the instrument that we've got today. So I've got several additional videos for you talking about the horn or le corps, as they say in France, which simply just means the horn. Um, we're going to take a look at... Um, uh, a video put together again by the U.S. Army Field Band. Um, in particular, this is by Staff Sergeant Becky McLaughlin, um, who's a French horn player for them. And she's going to give you kind of an introduction to the French horn, show you how it works. She's going to show that stopping with her hand going inside the bell, as well as play some pieces that you might have recognized from films. Um, the next video is by a guy by the name of F. Horn Patrick. Remember the French horn? 
F for F horn or horn in the key of F. Um, and he is going to be playing since this week we on May the 4th was Star Wars Day, and then on May 5th was Cinco de Mayo, but also Revenge of the Sith. And a friend pointed out that since we have the Mandalorian now, we have the This is the May instead of This is the Way. I thought I'd continue on with the, the Star Wars theme going on. Um, F. Horn Patrick is going to be showing you Ray's theme from the Star Wars film episode 7, where it's part of the last trilogy of the saga. So where we first get introduced to Ray on the planet that she's at while she's scavenging for parts and stuff, this is the theme that plays in the background. In fact, most if you haven't noticed, most of the key people within the Star Wars saga has their own theme that gets played when you get introduced to them. That's one of the ways, if you pay attention to the music, you can tell who's in the scene or who's about to be in the scene by this music that's playing. For example, the Imperial March that you hear performed, we know Darth Vader's coming in. Okay, so F. Horn Patrick, um, he's going to have an interesting video for you as he plays through that, the whole thing on, on French horn. Then something a little bit fun, uh, a channel by the name of Vinhetiero, um, a little bit of comedy involved. Uh, he at the piano and another guy on horn, another guy doing some percussion stuff, are going to show you snippets of seven of some of the best known French horn lines that you might have heard in the past. Um, in fact, there are two of them that you have definitely heard before. And then rounding everything out, it's just a good, fun piece brought to us by the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra. We have the finale section of the William Tell Overture, which has got some fun stuff. And what I like about this video is you get to see they, they pan around between the different instruments as they're kind of playing the melody lines. Um, and so it makes it a lot easier to follow along with what that that French horn sound is. So that's all that I've got for you guys for this week for Good Mythical Music. I'll see you guys again on Monday next week for the final Can't Stop the Music Challenge. Yeah, we're, that's going to be the last one that brings us right into the final or compilation of the spring program. So I will have one final Good Mythical Music for you that uh, we're going to try to pull together something special for you for next week. Hope that you enjoy it. That's all that I've got. But before I go, let's not forget. Number one, be helpful today and every day around the house. Number two, be sure that you give your folks a hug. Three, tell someone you love them. And number four, I look forward when we all get to be back together after this education in exile. You guys have a good Thursday.